Today I want to talk about some applications of PV equals NRT, the ideal gas law, because there's a lot of things that you can do with it besides just solving PIVNERT all the time. You can use it to find things like the density of gas, and so I want to do a couple examples of finding density of gases, which has a lot of utility for a number of different technological kind of applications. Um, you can also rearrange PIVNERT uh, in order to get you various things depending on the information that you're given. So I just want to talk about a couple different ways that we can play around with this. And then I'm also going to apply stoichiometry to the ideal gas law. And we'll kind of see how we can solve problems if we're looking at an entire system. So if we're producing a gas and we're under certain conditions, then um, using Pivner to solve for variables that we're missing. So let's uh, start with density. Remember that density is uh, essentially a concentration. It's the number of grams of something per milliliters of the thing. So um, how much stuff and how much space, essentially. So let's look at calculating the density of helium and how much stuff and how much space here. We're going to use units of grams per liter. And we're at 21 degrees Celsius and we're at 752 millimeters of mercury. So um, we need to figure out what we're given and what we're looking for here. And so what we're looking for is the density and we want to know the grams per liter. And since we're asking for grams per one liter, then that gives us information about the volume. So if you've seen other videos that I've done with gas laws, I like to list out the different variables that we're given. So per liter means per one liter. And this is going to be essentially a um, an exact quantity here. So I'm not going to worry about this for sig figs, or I could give it as many sig figs as I wanted. Um, because it's per one liter as part of the unit there. So there's our volume. Um, we're given a temperature. So that's 21 degrees Celsius, which we're going to have to convert to Kelvin. So we're going to add our 273.15, but we're going to round it to the ones place anyway. So that gives us 294 Kelvin. And then our pressure, we're given in millimeters of mercury. So it kind of depends on which R value we want to use. If we don't know the R value for millimeters of mercury, which isn't one that I know off the top of my head, then I'm going to want to convert millimeters of mercury to either atmospheres or kilopascals, because that's a little more common. So let's convert it to atmospheres, because that's a nice easy one for millimeters of mercury, because one atmosphere is equal to 760 millimeters of mercury. So that's kind of a nice conversion factor to do it that way and we end up with just slightly less than one atmosphere of pressure. Maintaining my three sig figs there. And because I converted to atmospheres just by virtue of ease of conversion factor, then I'm going to use the R value that has atmospheres in it as well. So 0 0.0821 and the units on that again are liter atmospheres per mole Kelvin. And um, you might see this also in a non-rounded form as 0 0.08206. You can use that as well. Um, I'm just going to use this rounded one for our purposes today because we're working with three sig figs. Okay, so what am I solving for then? Well, I have everything else, but I don't have my number of moles. And my number of moles is going to be important because when I'm looking for a density, I need to get to grams. So I can solve for the number of moles and that will get me to grams eventually because I can use the periodic table because I know the identity of my gas to convert to grams. So let's rearrange PV equals NRT. Here's my ideal gas law and I'm going to solve for N which gives me PV over RT. So that's my pressure times my volume divided by my R liter atmospheres per mole Kelvin are my units times my temperature which is 294 Kelvin absolute temperature there okay so when I solve for that then I end up with an N that is equal to and again we're rounding to three significant figures and I'm looking at my math here, my atmospheres will divide out with the atmospheres on my R. My L, my liters for my volume, will divide out with my liters for my R. Kelvin will divide out. I'll be left with a per per mole, which flips it back to the top, which is what I'm looking for. 
So 4.10 times 10 to the negative 2 moles is what I'm given there. And now it's asking for density in grams per liter. So we've already figured out the number of moles per liter because we have our one liter for volume here. So now our density, uh, we need to convert our moles to grams. And we do that with the periodic table. So when I look at the periodic table for helium, for every one mole of helium, and I know it's helium because it's given, I have 4.003 grams, which gives me 0 0.164 grams, and then per the one liter, which that's the way that I set up the problem to solve for. So there's my density of my gas, 0.164 grams per one liter, which doesn't sound like very much, but, and it really isn't. Um, gas particles are pretty small and they spread out a lot, so you can have kind of a great amount of gas or great volume of gas without actually having a large density of particles. Okay, now another way we can use density is by knowing the molar mass of something. And we can actually kind of convert PV equals nRT into a form that's a little more um, user friendly, if you want to think about it that way. So recall that molar mass is equal to grams per one mole. We just played around with that with our conversion from helium. So our grams is a mass, of course, obviously M, and our moles here is going to be our N value from Pivnert. So if I rearrange this and solve for N, then N is going to be equal to the mass divided by the molar mass, mass divided by molar mass. And now if I plug that in for Pivnert, so here's my PV equals n rt and I do a little bit of rearrangement so if I multiply both sides by the molar mass and I divide both sides by my volume then I can do a little algebraic trickery and I end up with this equals mass over volume rt See, I just kind of did some algebraic rearrangement there. And now if I know or I'm looking for density, that's what a mass per volume is. That's D. Grams per liter, right? So if I'm looking for grams per liter, which is a density, then now I can have kind of this different form. So this different form of PV equals nRT, I call PIM dirt like this, as opposed to Pivnert. So Pivnert is the PV equals nRT. Pimdirt is dealing with density. They're the same quantity, but we're given different values. And if we're given different values or if we're looking for different values, we can use this iteration of PV equals nRT. So if we use Pimdirt, then we can solve problems that look like this. We're looking for the density of nitrogen in grams per liter. So let's use this guy at 25 degrees Celsius and 1.5 atmospheres of pressure. So now if we're listing out our variables, we're given a temperature, which we need to convert to Kelvin because it's an absolute temperature. So that's 298K. Then we're given a pressure that we're not going to have to convert, which is nice, in atmospheres, which means we're going to use the R value that is also in atmospheres, which we just used in the other one as well, liter atmospheres per mole Kelvin the units on that. And now my molar mass to solve for D, because that's what I'm looking for, is my density. It's the same kind of problem. We could have done this for the other one too. It's kind of two ways to solve it. The molar mass is the molar mass of my gas. It's N2. So my molar mass of one nitrogen is 14.01 grams per mole, and it's diatomic. So we're going to multiply that by two, which gives us 28.02 grams per mole. And now we rearrange and solve for D. D is equal to P times the molar mass divided by RT. And if we plug everything in, 1.50 atmospheres times our molar mass, 2 grams per mole, divided by our R, 
0.821 liter atmospheres per mole Kelvin times our temperature, absolute temperature, which is in Kelvin. Then if we're analyzing our units, our atmospheres divide out, our Kelvin divide out, our moles divide out, right? Because this one flips to the top and this one's at the bottom, so those would divide out. I'll be left with an answer in grams per liter. So I'm going to be left with a density there, which is good. And it, the question asks for grams per liter, so that's good to go. So when I plug and chug, it looks like I'm looking at three sig figs here. I end up with 1.72 grams per liter. Okay, so just another way to rearrange PV equals NRT. Um, if we know the identity of our gas, if it's not just some ideal gas without an identity, then we can actually take into account its molar mass and figure out its density from there. Now, the last application I want to play around with is using stoichiometry to get at some information. So we can solve problems and using our understanding of measuring the elements to look at problems like this guy. So the first thing that I need to do is figure out kind of what I'm missing, what I'm given, and then go from there. It's asking for liters of chlorine, and I'm given information about hydrochloric acid. And so even though this is a gigantic equation, I couldn't even fit it all in one line. I can still follow my same pattern that I have thing one, which is my HCl. That's the thing that I'm given information about. And thing two, which is what I'm asked for information about. So I can use my stoichiometry to figure out how many moles of that gas that I have. And that will be my N value for PV equals NRT. So I'm going to go grams to moles. Moles to moles. And then moles oh I don't, that's all i need to do i just need the moles of it got a little overzealous here because <laughs> that's going to give me my n all right the mole to mole ratio there is going to come from the balanced chemical equation so i have 16 moles of hcl that gives me five moles of chlorine and now i go to the periodic table and i plug in the molar mass for hydrochloric acid which i find to be 36.458 grams per mole and when I plug that in, I end up with 8.07 times 10 to the negative 2 moles of chlorine gas. And that's going to be my N value. Okay. Now it's asking for volume. So volume is what I'm looking for. I have an N from my stoichiometry. I have a T from my question, which I'll have to convert to Kelvin. I have a pressure from my question that I'm going to have to convert to something that I actually know the R value units for, which I don't know for millimeters of mercury. So we'll just go to atmospheres again because that's just a nice easy conversion. 760 to 1, which gives me 1.04 atmospheres. And then, of course, the R I'm going to use is going to be the one with atmospheres in it. So 0 0.0821 liter atmospheres per mole Kelvin. I always tell my students that they're not going to have to memorize this constant, but they're going to use it so much that it's going to be ingrained in there for a while. So um, hopefully that's true for any people that are watching this video that aren't my students as well. Okay, so we're solving for volume. So we're going to rearrange NRT over P. And now we're going to plug and chug. We get 8.07 times 10 to the negative 2 moles. There's my N times my R liter atmosphere per mole Kelvin times my temperature divided by my pressure. And that gives me a volume of it looks like three sig figs, 1.99 liters of gas. Okay, so that's another application of PV equals NRT. We're given a system, we're given a balanced chemical equation. We can use that to find N and then plug and chug if we know the conditions that that system exists under. So I hope this has helped to run through some problems and I'll talk to you again soon.